Hey, Victor, are, are you having trouble connecting to that software thing? I'm just now opening a new tab. <laughs> I was rearranging stuff on my desktop. Okay, yeah. For some reason, it's still giving me the error, but I want to see if you go to get it. Uh, yeah, we started. Okay, so so far what we have done is the sketches, which is the very base, and then we went to the solids, how to create different solids from the sketches. Now, let's say if you're working with a complex design, uh, which is pretty big. Uh, let's say, for example, let's see if I have an example. Um, here you go. Let's say, for example, you're building something similar to a uh, Lego, for example, okay, something like this, okay, and when you're building with Lego, what, what do you have? You have different building blocks, right? With these building blocks, you can create anything. Uh, nowadays, you have these specific blocks for, let's say, this uh, what I have here as a uh, to build a car, but if you have the general versions, you can build anything. It's own to your imagination. It's similar for can it can be similar to for any any case. You can build anything you like, and sometimes you can do motion analysis. Sometimes you can do simulation, stress analysis. If you are working with fluids, so you want to see how streamlined your design is for aerodynamics and not. You can do a lot of things. So for complex designs, you don't want not have one solid body. Rather, you will want to have is several parts. Um, an ideal work example will be building a car. Um, they design different part of it and send it to different uh, sections of a manufacturer and they will build different parts. Like, for example, the door will be made by someone. Front one will be from, for to one manufacturer, the back one might be from another manufacturer or from the same manufacturer, different sections. They know, do you need to have all the details for the dice and tasks that we'll be talking about later also in this great workshop uh, for that. So, Today's topic is mostly on the assembly. If you have the parts ready, can we build uh, those assemblies? Uh, everything, most, uh, most of the things you need is already in the tutorials, but still we're gonna go through it again. Now, if you click on the SOLIDWORKS, top left, the new button, you, you will see this one, right? So far, we've been working on the parts where we're doing the sketches and the solids itself. But when we're working here, we might want to do the assemblies uh, where it will provide you with the tools necessary for that. Now, the, if you're working with assemblies, there are two approaches. One is the top-down approach, another is the bottom-up approach, okay? In one approach, what you have is you build the parts separately, okay? You build everything separately. Let's say, for example, if we are trying to build this one in the problem one for, from today's practice, what we're gonna do is build all these parts separately first. Once we have built all of this together, we're gonna assemble it top, top down. Another one is bottom up, where is um, you start working from the assembly itself. Okay, uh, you first build the base, which is which is gonna support the whole thing. Then once you have everything, you just build the second part on top of that. So that will be visible in a transparent layer and you can still keep building on top of that. Uh, which approach to take depends on you. Uh, you can decide if you wanna go with the top down or the bottom up approach. Um, no, there is no restriction. Sometimes there might be, let's say if, if you have a big project where you have several parts and a different number of teams are working on it, 
chances are uh, they will build their part from the specifications that everyone has been shared with, and then they will be assembled. Then again, if you're working on something like, let's say a pipeline company where they're building pipeline around uh, manufacturing, let's say an oil gas uh, refiner, Reese, where one group may be working on the on building the new tanks, another one is for working on the pipelines, another one is building on new sections of it, uh, of the whole um, of the plant. In that case, everything will be bottom up. Uh, all of the parts that you'll be one another teams will be creating, uh, you will be able to see them, but you will not be able to edit them. And when you're working with the group work, some, usually they have a service called PDMS, uh, which is the oldest one. Mm -hmm. They also have some module for SolidWorks to work in a group where, let's say if you have, a, you're sharing a network, you can start working on them together. So before we move on to the example, uh, do you guys have any questions? No. Okay, awesome. So let's start by building a few parts, okay? Um, I'll be a little rough. Uh, uh, and I'll be missing a few details on this um, just for the sake of time and because the focus is mostly on the assembly so, okay so let's start with this we have a hexagonal mark so the first thing we're going to create the parts okay oh, let me see if we have something easy on today's list yeah okay so this sounds like the easiest one oh, we can play around with this quite a bit okay so let's say we start with this. So now the first one is pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, it's taking a little time on the computer. Okay, as always, we're gonna start with this uh, front plane itself. Uh, we're gonna create this slot with holes on it. So let's see. I'm just drawing it, using it, and we know the distance between this is 30. I'm using the millimeter scale for creating this. So 30 millimeters. On both ends, we have this radius as 10. Okay, so if we adjust one, the another one will be automatically adjusted as 10. And then we have two holes here, which has a diameter of 10. So what we are going to do is create this. Um, I'm going to use the center line to create the center line here and do a mirror entity. Right. As a, I like creating mirrors. And one easy thing it, about this is if I adjust the radius or diameter of this one, the other one will be adjusted automatically. So let's work for selecting different parameters. Okay, now the thickness, if you look into this one, this one is called a drive link and thickness is given as five millimeters. So I'm going into the feature extrude and the thickness I'm gonna create for this one is gonna be five millimeters. Okay, so we're gonna save this. Uh, let's save it as problem three. I'm gonna give it a name as the drive link. The part, uh, first part. Okay, the second one is giving, uh, is giving us the whole thing. So let's jump into the other pieces. So we'll be building the easiest parts first. Where now, if you look at this one, we have two pegs. One has a diameter of 10. Both have 10, but one is 10 millimeters in length, another is 15. Okay, so it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We will have the sketch, nothing much to do on this too. So we're gonna just create it as it is. Ten, and we're extruding it to make it 10. Okay, uh, click OK. I'm going to save it as 10 by 10. Oh, peg. And let's create the other one also. Let's 
okay and what we're going to do is we have but this is 10, but the extrude is gonna be 15. And say this as 10, 15 back. Okay, next we have this again, another slot, but now we also have a hole in between. And if you see, we have, Two, two of those, one has the, was called the central link, another is called the rocker link. Okay, so let's start with the rocker link. Okay, okay. so again, let's start with the front one. Uh, we're going to use the slot tool to create this. And I'm going to draw the center line here. And we're going to draw another slot because you see both of them have the same uh, shape in terms of the slot. So now smart dimension, we know one of them has center to center is 100, another one is center to center is 70. Right. So center to center here is 100. And center to center here is 70. Okay. And the thickness here we see as 10 for the inner one. Okay, so for the inner one we have is 10. And for the outer one, we need to adjust this radius as you see, because this radius is going to be the distance from here to the center. So that means uh, it's 10, and the thickness that's going to be 20. Okay, so we have a radius of 10. Good. Now, the, for the center one, we have this as a diameter of 10. So straightforward, we have the smart dimension tool, draw it as 10. And then let's use that mirror entities to just mirror about the center itself. Now, the thickness. The thickness is given here. Again, this is five millimeters. So what we're gonna do is make it five millimeter and save it. Okay. Now for the say this one we will have is rocker link. Hey Sayed. Yes. The uh, thickness that you just did right now. How do you um how did you click all of that so where everything would be extruded? Was it just oh, a... okay. okay, okay, let's let's go. So solid work so automatically picks up where the close co contour is. Right now it figures out this is the maximum contour it has. So if you click this one, it's automatically picking that up. But if you think this is wrong, what you need to do is go into here, which is called the selected contours. Um, select this box, and let's say you're interested only in this one and this one. You just select those contours that you need and you can invert the selection. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, so let's move on. So we have this, okay, the first rocker link, that looks good. Now we have the center link here, right? Let's, let's bring this one. This is something similar. Okay, now one trick is uh, you can draw it again. Another trick is on, in the assembly, you can save it as a new, new document while modifying most of the things. I'm just gonna, draw it again either way so that i have separate files sometimes it's a good idea to have if you if the names are different or if you think the specific specifications might change later on uh saving it as a different name so that it's not gonna modify any anything other than the ones you're working on um it might happen is that you're changing specification and solidworks usually links everything in the assembly uh, you might be messing up something. It's better to be safe. So I'm going to go into the slots again. Okay, and circles. I'm not going to create the mirrors this time, just for diversity here. 
So we know here is 90. Then we have the center to center of this is 50. Now we have the thickness, in, but in this time we have the radius as five. So this is gonna be five in radius. And the outer one is 10. And the inner diameters are 10 each. I'm just going to make it 10 here. And for this one, I'm just gonna select this, this one here. So it's gonna pick it up from there and click OK. Now you're done. Again, what we need to do is click the extrude boss. Usually it picks up. Now for this one, the thickness is again five millimeters. So that's good for us. We have our five millimeter and we can go from there. Okay. And this is called a center link. So center link. Okay. Now the last part, which is going to take a little while. Okay, so any ideas how we should build this one? Would you do like a, maybe like a center arc or, uh, or would you do a straight like triangle and then you can curve off the edges and you add like a center arc at the top of each point? Yes, we can do that. And the other one that you were trying to say is creating a central link, maybe say, say somewhere around here and create one side, we can mirror the other side, both works. Okay, now the, on, the only change will be around somewhere around uh, here where you need to do a little modification, but still it's gonna work at the moment. So as you said, let's do it the other way, right? Where, where what you were suggesting maybe, let's start with a triangle itself, right? Okay, so I'm just drawing a triangle, but if you see, I'm drawing it based on a center line. Uh, you will know the reason why I'm doing it like this is because um, if you think carefully, what I'm trying to draw is the connection between these holes, I mean, the center lines we have here. So let me see if I can draw something here with the highlighter. Okay, so what I've drawn right now is this point this line itself. Oops. Let's see if let's draw. This line, not the outer ones on it at all. So we have the smart dimension tool to know that this distance has to be 80. And again, the same thing for this one is 80, right? as you can see from, from here. Now, once you have that, the next question is, what's the thickness of this whole thing itself? It's uh, 12, right? So six in either side of the center line. So what we're gonna do is go into the offset entities, okay, select the lines that we're working on, and then make it as six millimeters there. Okay, and uh, you, you need to select this one, which is called bidirectional. So now it's going to create on the both sides of your sketch. And that's going to be the main sketch that you want to start working from. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to worry about this circles. So let's start with the circle and the centers are going to be still this. So, you know, that's the reason we started with the center line itself. So. Okay, so we had two of them and here we have something called a 50, but that has to be an arc there. So we select this and create something. Okay, yeah, this, this thing likes to give people trouble. Maybe now and then. Okay, and so, so now for this inner one, we know the radius is 15. For this one, we have, as you see here, this is 15. And the other one is also the same. 
Would you need to do a oh. uh, construction line so that you can be able to remove them, those corners, or no? Oh, yeah, we'll be removing them. Uh, in a minute. You're talking about these portions here, right? Yeah, so that we can cut out whatever we don't need. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can. Oh, oh and we'll be doing that for sure. Okay. Yeah. So now we have this radius of 15, which is basically diameter of 30. Okay, and these are pretty small. So we're going to go into the treatment radius. That's for what we need. And we're cutting off whatever we don't need. Right. And as you can see, we don't need a lot of the th things here. So you have your first piece. Now let's go to the second one. Let's zoom in to make sure we're cutting the right things. I don't know why I thought that in order to do what you're doing right now, you needed to do actual construction lines, but I guess- yeah, You can do it, you can do it. So that's the classic way of doing it. So this is what the SolidWorks is an advantage on. So previously you might have to do some construction line to do, know where to trim. The trim closes, trim away inside in the corner. But if you, they have this power trim, which is the advantage of, of uh, the SolidWorks. You, if you if, if anything is intersecting and you know you can cut away let's say for example i know that this is one of the um, point this is one of the points and this is one of the points so I can, if i cut this anything within those points will just be taken away so okay we're blessed with this <laughs> advantage yeah. okay so now we have this corner here which is 10 so we're going to take is um, this one which is called the fillet, sketch fillet then the radius is already selected 10 you can just select this click ok now if you notice carefully there is something written here all fillets and rounds are three a radius of three that means if you notice carefully you have something around let me delete the other, other ones first there are some fillets around some around here all right and this will all be this three so we make it three and we're going to select these corners and this one this one and are we missing anything here i don't think so uh, this one and this one and click ok so now you have everything ready, okay? Uh, what we're missing is this points here. So for the sake of, because let's see, uh, for the moment, I think we don't need those because we're not using any of those for any work. Do you want me to draw those or just, we're gonna leave them just so, so we can jump, jump into the assembly itself. I don't think we need to draw them, they were good. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see. Let's finish up this. We have this ten here and uh, ten here. Okay. And for this, we know the thickness is gonna be ten millimeters. Okay. That's so feature extrude. So what we're gonna do is ten millimeters. Click OK, and this is called the plate. So let's save it. As a plate, plate one. Okay, now we have everything ready. We can just go into the assembly. So we're opening up the new file and going into this option called assembly. As all the other files are open already, you will see when you open up the assembly, everything is shown on the left. In case it doesn't show up, you can always select this option called uh, browse. And if you do so, uh, you can just select the files you have there. When you're working with the assembly, one thing to remember is you need a fixed base. Okay, here we had what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, six different parts. So you need to uh, make sure that one of them is your base and which is fixed. It doesn't move no matter what you do. And the other ones can be movable, it's completely fine. That way the assembly components are pretty sturdy and you, if, even if you're doing some motion analysis or something else, you can play around with it pretty easily. Okay, so 
I, what I'm planning in uh, doing is I'm going to make this big piece as the fixed one and other ones will be the float one. And I will show you if you want to, how to change those also. So I'm, what I'm going to do on the left side, I'll be selecting everything here first by pressing a control button on my keyboard. And now I'm going to paste everything. So just click, 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 click. I'm just scrolling out for space and click and click so everything now is on my workspace here and as you can see on the property manager on the left side here it says f and for the other ones it's a dash right so whatever it says f is the fixed one as you can see this small cylinder is a fixed one but what we plan on doing is making this as the fixed one right so what you're going to do is right click on it and select, make it, you will see this option called float. So now everything is float. So we're gonna select this. So we know, okay, this is the plate, right click on it and make it fix. Now it's gonna, it's not gonna move while others will start moving. Okay, good. Now we have all, everything, all the parts ready and in the same space. What we're gonna look, we're looking into is this option called mate. If you click on it, the left property manager will show up and it has a number of options for your assembly. Usually you will see the most important ones here. Uh, a few of them can be found on the advanced mechanical mates on the other ones. Um, most likely if you're using for motion analysis and other things, you're gonna use this two mostly and sometimes the width and symmetry ones. Uh, for the mechanical ones, if you have created something like the cam, slot, and hinge, so to create those motions, you might be using uh, mechanical maze. But the same effects can be found, can be created using the standard and advanced maze too. Okay, so let's start with the basics. So whenever you're selecting something, uh, it will automatically create a coincident mate. If you if you are planning on changing it to something, it it might change. So I'm going to show you one at a time. So let's say for example. Um, here, if I look into the assembly carefully, the plate is connected with the drive link itself, right? So, and this, I think this is the drive link, yeah. So for the drive link, um, they are connected in one surface. So maybe I'm thinking of, hey, this surface will go on top of this surface. If you click on it, it has been selected, you saw that it's been moved and click okay. So now, what happened was you have defined a relation between them is that this the surface the inner the other side of this uh, drive link surface and this surface will always be coincident that means it will be it will remain in the same plane it doesn't have to be in a fixed position but it, it, even if you're moving it along that you will always see that it is on the same plan, plane here at, even if i'm saying that i'm moving it to the right you will see it has moved to a distant but not on the place you want okay so make sure when you're defining these constraints you know how you do the next one is let's say the coins concentric one which is this so if you're selecting concentric or cylindrical surfaces and you will see that they will align now on this case as we have Ha they both have the same center axis they will be moving along the center axis but you are not defining it to uh, where or where not it can move in this case it has to be moving uh, within this surface and within this axis itself right so if i add a second constraint here and here and click ok now, what we have done is it, we have restricted its movement just within the perimeter of this, and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna move just circularly around that point itself. Sounds cool, right? So now uh, what we're gonna do is look into the other one. There is another option, which is called this tangent here, right? Tangent is basically, it's a, if you're selecting the uh, concentric sur uh, surface and a straight surface, it's going to create a tangent surface. Now, if you're planning on moving it along, uh, you will see no matter how you're moving, it's going to always have the same surface connected. It's the same as the coincident one. Anyways, we're not going to need this here. 
uh one important point one important point is um sometimes you might have to reuse a few of the pieces quite a few times if you notice carefully this 10 by 10 peg uh is used once uh, and this 10 by 15 peg has been used three times one two and three three times so this is our 10 by 10 by 15 one and you need to create i mean have a copy of this twice you can do the same thing, go into the insert component and reinsert these parts as many times as you like. Or what you can do is just exit the map, select this object here, control button on your keyboard and just click and move your cursor. You'll be create another version of it. And if you look carefully here, it's just creating another instance of it on the property manager. It's not like it's um, just making anything else uh, or creating a new file on your root directory itself. So once you've done this, uh, let me save this before anything happens to it. Assembly complete. Okay, so we know this 10 by 10 peg is gonna go here. So the 10 by 10 is this one, if I remember correctly. Uh, and I'm gonna select this mate. Make that first, the first thing first, we're gonna make it concentric. The next one is we're gonna select the upper surfaces. So now it's all the way in. And we know it's gonna be inside of that link. Okay, awesome. The next part is uh, the center link with the drive link. So let's see which is the center link. Uh, this is the center link. So I'll be selecting this concentric version of it and this concentric version of it. We have something here and now let's select the surfaces. Click OK. Same thing uh, we're gonna do with the other one. We already know this is the one that's left. Um, we're going to select this. Now, I'm going to bring a few, in, 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 few things that's going to be fun. Um, the, what first thing first. Uh, when I'm selecting this, let's not select this. At all. Let's, let's do a little trick here. because I haven't talked about this. Yeah, I haven't talked about this. So now I'm selecting this surface here and this surface here. This is concentric and this looks fine completely. It's, it's just getting assigned. But what if uh, we started with selecting the surfaces that themselves? So if I'm selecting this surface and I wanna make it concentric with this one, chances are it's gonna go overlap with one another. Right, because it has to be on the other side me. So instead of just select, going with the hassle of selecting the other surfaces by deselecting it, what you can do is something called the meta line, which you can see here. If you click on it, it will flip the object for you and make it the surfaces coincide from the other side. So it's just kind of flip the object itself. And you will have the option to select which portion you want to connect to one another. Okay, easy peasy on that one. Now we're gonna go with the same thing again, making them concentric. The rest of the piece is quite straightforward from that point on. So we're gonna select this and this, making them concentric again. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I made the assembly wrong. Heh. That's supposed to be under. Let's see. So now let's say if you made uh, um, made wrong, wrong by any chance, right? What you're gonna do is go to the main sketch itself and see which are the links that you have created and which are wrong. And then you can delete them. So you can just select this here from the tree itself, right click on it and delete. Okay. So now we have deleted both of them. Uh, there is no constraints. Uh, let's go to the mate and make it the correct mate. We want this bottom surface with this surface here and we want them concentric. 
Okay, and then we will have this one and this one concentric again. And it should be stretching the surfaces from this side. Okay, so now you have everything ready and you can make it move any way you like if you want. Okay, now, um, of course, it's not on the same arrangement. You, you guys can make those changes later on. I'm just going to add these things first and we're going to talk about a, a few other things. Okay. So now let's exit this mate and I'm going to delete this extra ones. So I'm not going to add this because we're not going to need them for discussion for the moment, but please add them later on when you're practicing. So now, as if you look carefully, we can make, make it move, right? And this one is making a whole 360 degree angle here, while we have some angles around here. Uh, and what you can do is restrict them. That's the, that's the fun part of it. Or make some of these things parallel to one another or some other cases. So if you go into the mate itself, you will have this option called these angles. So let's say if I'm selecting this surface here and here, okay, they're trying to make it uh, as a plane or as a coincidence, but you can also select which angle do you want them to be and adjust them on those angles. Okay, as you see, I'm changing it, these angles are changing. Or maybe, you, maybe you're someone who says that, hey, uh, I don't like that one. What I wanna do is go into the advanced mate and define a variable angle, okay? So let's say you decided that, hey, the minimum they can bend is let's say 30 degrees and the maximum they can bend is let's say 115. Click OK. So they will be restricted in terms of, of the movement if as long as it, it um, I mean what uh, the angle limit you have added to this. Okay, so maybe if you plan to go beyond that one, you need to go and edit this made itself, which is basically this limit angle. Come, go back there, right click on it, go into the edit features, and then just add this, a change or make this uh, dimensional between the angles change as per as you like. Okay. Um, a few things I didn't talk about is this one, which is the variable distance. Um, let me do, do a quick, Thing here. Let's bring one of the, make another copy of this. Okay, it's hand. Okay, yeah, it looks. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna create getting another copy of this. Okay, now for this one, you decided, I'm just making this up, this is not part of the problem that maybe. Um, we will have a concentric part with respect to this. And maybe we will be selecting these two surfaces. Now it's gonna align that there, but you wanna switch it. So I'm not selecting this mid alignment. So it's on the outer side. You decided that, hey, whatever this object is, we wanna make it a little distant from the original object itself. So we can just make it like a 10 millimeters. So it's gonna be always be 10 millimeters away. Or if you go into the advanced mates itself and select this one, so you have 10 millimeters and you can decide, hey, as close as maybe let's say five millimeters it can go of the object and maybe as far as 50 millimeters. If you click OK to that, you will be see, able to see that it is moving along that axis itself. And that's it. You have all the assembly tools you need to create any assemblies and you can just come up with any number of assembly comp uh, combinations for this and you should be fine with this. Uh, uh, one more thing that I actually want to show today, it's called the configuration and uh, not configuration of how you want to display these things to anyone. So if, if someone just looks into this and but you want to show them different components of it, it's a part of a presentation. 
So on the left property manager, you will see this, which looks like a, um, a tree-like structure. If you go there, you will see this. This shows all the um, parts of the assembly. Uh, right click on it, you will see these options here. Uh, one of them is new exploding view. Select that. So now you will have the option to disassemble this whole thing. Let's say I'm selecting this one first. You will see this X, Y, and Z. You can just pull them out. And that's it. Just click OK. Now I'm just throwing it as, a, as one of them, or maybe you can just do this. Um, okay, let's do this. Well, in the future. Okay. If you want to do it for multiple of them, you can do the same thing. Maybe for a different object, whichever you want to move, just select them at one go, click OK. Now you will, you will have some exploded view created. I'm just showing only two or three of them here. This one will contain everything you need. Right click on it. If you click, click collapse, it will go to the original position. But if you want to show someone that a few pieces that's going to come, come out of this, right click on it and click explode. And it will show you an exploded view with different parts of it. If you like, you can also create this, call this animate collapse, and it will show you in an animated view how every piece goes to where. So if, if you have something cool that you're creating in an assembly and you want to show people that, hey, how they disassemble, which is basically, if you right, let's see, let me pause this, right click on it, create animate explode. It will show you by removing all the parts separately. All, and if you want to do the other way around, just cross this, right click on it and just create animate collapse. You can also save this later on. So, you know, just make a video out of it and show your friends. So that's all I had for the assembly today. Um, on the Blackboard, what I did was um, for you guys, created a few samples so that, we, that you can play around uh, for the assembly. Um, I haven't created this, show, given you these parts. The problem number two is pretty complex, as you can see. It will be a good practice for creating solids and the sketches. But I've also provided you with the files of all this. So if you just want to practice the assembly, just look into this one, get the direction. The other one has all the parts needed. You can just create it right away, just creating the assembly. This one we have showed right now. Um, this is also straightforward, easy. Um, just play around with them, see how the assemblies can be worked out. And I've also added a few extra ones, like um, on, the, uh, on Blackboard is this one. Let me load it. Okay, so this Lego pieces, you will figure, find uh, uh, on that file only the ones uh, on the wheels, this base, this base, and this red base, and the yellow base. And now you can just create multiple of them and just try to see if you can figure out how this assembly has been born. If you look carefully, the trees are, I mean, the wheels are moving. So you need to figure out how in which manner you need to select the mate so that it can still rotate within the space. Okay, this is one of them. Another one, uh, let me see if I can pull that one up also. Okay, it's our Lego man. So I provided you with two Lego pieces so you can just play around with them and see how they works. Okay, and if you like, you can move their legs, hands, anything. Okay, any questions so far? I had just one question. So mm -hmm. did you create the, the parts in the assembly or in the parts section of SolidWorks? Uh, which one? Uh, for just these? The, the actual parts themselves. No, so like when we were when we were creating like the pegs and the like the base, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were, were that, was that being created in the assembly? A section of SolidWorks or the no, part? No, 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 no. They were uh, being created on the separate uh, file sections of it. Okay. So let me let me see if I can pull that up for you. Uh, wait, uh, where is it? Tutorial problem. Okay. So if you notice carefully here, um, I have this folder problem three and I've created all the parts separately and saved them. This is the important part. You need to save them first. Okay. As 
the other files were already open in it. That's why it was showing up on the left side. If it was not, so let me close everything for you. Okay, my computer, it's a little slow. Sorry, yeah, yeah I say, I'm gonna go ahead and take off. Okay, yeah, sure. All right, see y'all later. See you. I'm gonna close this, close everything. I'm assuming we have nothing in there. Oh my God. Now, if you create this, uh, all the parts that we had, we were created on the part. But when we're doing the assembly, we need to create a file on the assembly file. Okay. Um, at the beginning, you will have nothing. Something like this. You just go here on the left side property manager, go to browse, and whichever files you need for that, you just open up. That's it. And then put them on your screen, click, click and click that's it so everything you need is here i think i i hope i answered your question yeah you did thank you okay so that's all i had for today and basically these are the components you're going to need uh, for creating your assembly um you know if you want like i said go into the practice files, create this, uh, the parts from scratch, scratch and then assemble them. And I, like I said, I've already put uh, three files, which is problem number two, that Lego man and the Lego car pieces also on, on the same file. So you can just as try assembling them if you don't wanna draw anything again. Either is fine, as long as it works for you. And on Thursday, uh, we'll be meeting again to see if you guys have tried this, if you have any problems and we will solve the problems from that point on. If needed, we can just go through another problem. Sounds good? Sounds good. Okay, so that's all. I'll be here for nine more minutes till eight. Uh, if you wanna try something on the meantime or if you have any question, I'll be here to answer them. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna go. Well, I'll try to see if I can fit in the practice some of the practice problems either tomorrow or uh, early in the, on Thursday. But mm -hmm. I know definitely I'm gonna. It, I'm just gonna be doing a lot of SolidWorks over spring break as well. Okay, it's complete. Can you tell me 